Hey there. I'm back with some more Lee Speak. We're going to review Dynamite, the St. Patrick's Slam special episode of AEW Dynamite for March 17, 2021. And this was a pretty entertaining episode. It was good. It was solid all around. You had good matches. You had some nice promos. You even had a great main event, which featured the ladies, the women of AEW. We had Britt Baker, Dr. Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa of NWA. And they put on yet another great match. These two have great chemistry and we will get into that later in the review. And spoiler alert, it was match of the night. AEW kicked off the night with the Penta El Cerro Miedo versus Cody Rhodes match. This was a good one, a good opener. Before Cody could finish his entrance, Penta dives on him. Later in the match, Penta goes for Cody's injured shoulder as he vowed to break his arm prior to the match. Later, Penta kicks out of a vertebraker from Cody. And then Penta breaks Cody's arm like he said he would, but Cody manages a roll up for the win. Solid opener for the show, but a lot of people will not agree with that ending, the finish. I would have thought Pentagon would have gone over in this match, but apparently that was not the case. Cody wins. Um, he's... Uh, starting to develop some kind of uh, stigma to some folks that they think he is another Triple H who buries talent, which I don't think is the case. But I do think he didn't need the win here unless they plan on extending this feud. If there's going to be another match, fine. We'll see where they go. But Pentagon broke Cody's arm here supposedly so I don't know how they're gonna get another match out of it so soon but it wasn't booked for next week so maybe down the line see planted but solid opener I just I I was just thought that Penta would have won following that we had Alex Marvez interviewing the Bucks backstage the Bucks sent a message pretty much to Ray Phoenix and Pac then Don Callis interrupts saying that he wants to see the Japan version of the Bucks. There's nothing elite about them anymore, he says. Do you see the same Nick and Matt from back then? That was pretty much it. They also took a jab at WWE with their no leg slaps rule. They had a, uh, Don presented a t-shirt that featured that. And they got a chuckle out of me. But, of course, there were some butthurt fans out there that take all that to heart. So, that's on them. The joke's on them. I hope AEW keeps it up. They like to have fun. Following that, we had Jade Cargill versus Danny Jordan. Jade made short work of Danny. He had uh, Jade performed a nice German suplex and Danny Jordan sold that nicely. She, it looked devastating. Jay Cargill wins his match in quick fashion. Not bad. She showcased a bit more of what she could do. So I think Jay Cargill will continue to get these squash like matches to build her up even more. But eventually I like to see her in another competitive match. Following this, we had MJF's new faction speaking via Tully, Blanchard, and of course, MJF says his piece as well. Tully runs down every member of the inner circle that got pummeled by each member of the Pinnacle, which is their new name. And he said he guessed that makes this group the baddest in AEW that they took down the hottest heel fas uh, faction, which was the inner circle. When you climb up, you're at the pinnacle. This featured a great promo from MJF, which is arguably his best promo to date in AEW. 
And that's saying a lot because he had nothing but hits when it comes to his promos. So kudos to MJF. He continues to knock it out the park. Continues to be one of the best speakers in AEW. A lot of people are a bit miffed on the name of the group, the Pinnacle. I don't mind it. It's all right. It's the logo that I don't really care too much for. In one of the chats I participate in, someone um, likened the Pinnacle's logo to the Denver Nuggets basketball team logo. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Following that up, we had the Jurassic Express and Bear Country versus Private Party and the Butcher and the Blade with Matt Hardy. See, Marco and Matt kick it off as Hardy thought he'd make for an easy target. Matt Hardy thought that stunt would make for an easy target, so he tagged in immediately. Later, Private Party hits the gin and juice finish, but Hardy tags himself in and finishes Marco off with a twist of fate, adding insult to injury as Butcher in the Blade and the Private Party with Matt Hardy win the match. We follow that up with a John Moxley and Eddie Kingston promo vignette. They talked down about the Good Brothers. They even brought up and made fun of talking shopper mania and such. Mox and Eddie have great chemistry, and it is clear they both are having fun while working with one another. We follow that up with Dasha interviewing Christian Cage. Cage says he's going to go on a rant. Workhorse is the word of this promo. He says he makes wrestlers level up. He says he's the workhorse in pro wrestling. The only spot he's interested in is Omega spot. He's on borrowed time. He'll see Kenny down the road. Now he then commented on why he's in AEW and he's there to cement his legacy. And he wants to put into action two words, actually three words outwork everyone. And it says such on his new shirt, which I bought the night of, cause I thought those three words are actually, actually apply to me as well. So it's relatable. Solid promo from Christian cage. And we'll see what he has going on in a W in the weeks to come. Then we have John Moxley and Eddie Kingston versus the good brothers. The good brothers beat down Kingston during his entrance. And then Mox immediately came out after to help defend Kingston. The good brothers then hit the magic killer on Mox on the outside, which takes him out of the match for quite a while. Carl Anderson and Eddie kick off the match officially in the ring. The good brothers have had the upper hand the whole match up to this point. Not long after the break, Mox finally gets the hot tag and he runs wild for a bit. Mox eventually wins it for the team via a cradle pin. Post-match, Omega comes out with a chair. The Good Brothers hit the magic killer on Kingston, and then the beatdown commences. Carl then uses a chair on Kingston's leg as he jumped from the top rope on top of that chair, which pretty much injured Kingston's foot. Eventually, the young bucks come out to calm down their buddies, the Good Brothers, and they all put up the too sweet gesture. Even Kenny Omega, Kenny Omega was out there as well. They all put up the sign, but the bucks refused to do so. They refused to too sweet the bullet club. So they backed off and backed out of the ring. And then Kenny Omega got into their face. He got into the bucks faces and this further, um, divides the elite. Um, eventually we're going to see a good brothers versus young bucks matchup in the future. If this segment had anything to say about it, following this up, we had Tony Schiavone interviewing sting and Darby Allen sting. Didn't get to say a word in this interview. Darby Allen did though. He said he wants to be a fighting champ. Now that he's done with team Taz, 
So he wanted to defend his title every week. And then he offered it to the Dark Order. But Archer interrupts. Then Team Taz interrupts. But Brian Cage has something to say instead. Taz was talking his little stuff, but Cage grabbed the mic from him. And he said he respects Sting and thinks Ricky Starks was wrong. And this upset the Team Taz members. And Brian Cage just walked to the back while Team Taz followed behind, arguing with Cage because of what he said. So it seems like we're going to start getting some ripples in Team Taz. Brian Cage may be out of the group sooner rather than later, which is fine because uh, a lot of people want Cage to actually start doing stuff on his own. And they already have Will Hobbs, so he can be the power guy in the group. So not bad. But back to Lance Archer, he came out there and said, since Darby likes coffins, he wanted to, he's going to end up putting him inside of one. So this could be a tease for a Lance Archer, Darby Allen TNT title match in the future as well. When Darby's finished with the dark order and Lance Archer could be the one to take the title off of Darby. So we shall see after Darby has had a nice lengthy run with title defenses. He will eventually drop it and to Lance may be the guy. Following that, we had a Scorpio Sky promo package, which was great, showcasing his new attitude, his new heel persona. Sky says he's a wrestling savant. So that could be one of his new taglines going forward. So we'll see what they have going for Sky. Hopefully they actually follow up on it this time and stop leaving him off of TV. He could use the time to get over his new character. So... We shall see. Then we followed that up with a match I didn't know was going to be on the show. Ray Phoenix versus TH2's and Helico. This was a good match. But I feel that TH2 could be doing much more on AEW TV. I don't know why they're relegated to the enhancement role. They're just too good for that. They rarely get wins. And when they do, it's against the lower tier teams, which is unfortunate. I would like to see TH2 in more prominent roles in the future. Come on, AEW. What are you thinking, TK? Let's book them like they should be booked. But Angelico did not get an entrance, which tells you all you need to know about where this match was going. And this wasn't even your usual Phoenix match, but it was good. Back from the break, Phoenix hits a cutter. Then uh, Angelico sold it nicely for a two count. But Phoenix wins eventually via a driver. And I thought it was a good match. Then we led up to the main event, the match of the night. And it involved the females. We had Thunder Rosa going at Britt Baker in a lights out match. The first ever women's main event on AEW TV. Both had a stare down. Both stared each other down to start. But of course, Rubble got involved as she knocked Thunder Rosa in the back with her crutches. And this match was just crazy. You had Death Valley drivers on top of ladders. You had thumbtacks. Britt took a thumbtacks bump. I would not have thought that Britt Baker would be in this type of match. And she showed and proved how tough she really is. She was bleeding from head to chin. She had the crimson mask going on. Thunder Rosa looked great as well. She had her blood. She was the first to start bleeding in this match due to a, I believe it was a, uh, a curb stomp to a ladder that did her in. Both took bumps on ladders. Both took, both took nice spots. Rebel went through a table which took her out of the match towards the end. And we had Thunder Rosa getting the victory as she propped up Baker with the Thunder Fire Thunder Driver finish from the apron to a table below. Britt was real bloodied up at this point. 
and Rosa covered her on the outside of the ring. One, two, three, and she was crying as she was covering Britt, which I'm sure this was a very nice heartfelt moment for her. As she finally went over Britt, she got the win in this Lights Out match. She won the feud, but it may not be over. We may see them again in the future going at one another, but it may be for gold at that point. We can only hope. But it was a great match, match of the night. People were talking about it. They're still talking about it. A lot of people are saying it was probably one of the best women's TV matches in a while or if ever. So that that's saying a lot. Because Britt Baker has come far from where she used to be during her first few matches in AEW. She's definitely gotten better. Improvements have been made. And you can see it. If you've been watching since the beginning like myself, then you know, you see the improvement. You know. Thunder Rosa, she did her best work as well. We know Thunder Rosa's good, but this made both ladies look good no matter if they won or lost. Britt Baker once again gets over in this loss as she left. With a bloody face. And once again, she has a t-shirt. A bloody face t-shirt. Which I'm sure is going to sell well. Because her first one did last year. After she got her nose broken by Hikaru Shida. Back in the early days of the pandemic. April 2020. Good stuff. And there you have it. There is your review for AEW Dynamite. The St. Patrick Slam edition. Special episode. And I also have the ratings. AEW took the victory again with 768,000 viewers to NXT's 597,000 viewers. I will be back next week with your review for Dynamite. Stay tuned. Leave a like and subscribe if you like the content. I do this weekly. And I would love to hear, read your feedback. It all helps the channel. I'll catch you later. Peace.